I am David, your developer on Duty, and in this video, we're gonna have a look at the new ECMAScript proposal to add types as comments to JavaScript. As you already know, JavaScript is a dynamically typed language without native support for static type information. On one hand, JavaScript's flexibility lets you easily write software, especially when you're in the prototyping phase. But once your project becomes bigger, or if you work in a team, it's not easy to understand the code base unless you ensure great discipline in data structures, naming conventions, and testing. And even then, you still often need to debug your application just to figure out what's going on. But with static type information, you would get code completion and code validation, which drastically increases the trust in your program. You make fewer mistakes, won't need to rely on the debugger so often, and your application tends to be more robust because a whole category of errors is not possible anymore. But also keep in mind that a type system won't catch logical bugs in your software. Here you can see the state of JavaScript 2020. And according to the question, what do you feel is currently missing from JavaScript? Static typing with 52.5% is the most wanted feature. In the state of JavaScript 2021, static typing is still the most wanted feature, even though the demand is now almost on par with a better standard library. One could maybe explain this with the existence of TypeScript. According to the state of the Octoverse, you can see that TypeScript gained a lot of momentum in the top languages over the years. To overcome JavaScript's missing type system, there have been various attempts to introduce type information. The most popular one by far is TypeScript. It's roughly a superset of JavaScript with type information, which you can compile back to JavaScript. And this additional compilation step is one of the biggest downsides because it increases the complexity and steps to run and test the code. For debugging, you need source maps to set breakpoints in the original source files. But there's also another possibility to add type information without the additional compilation step, using JSDoc comments. Here in this example, I define my function concatenate, which takes two parameters of type string and returns the concatenation of those two parameters. I use JSDoc comments to define the type of those parameters as well as the return value as well as the documentation of each of those things. Now, if I use a language server, which can actually interpret these comments, I get a nice help. Not only the documentation of my parameters and return values, but also the type definitions in TypeScript syntax. And since these are just plain comments, they are not interpreted by the JavaScript engines, and I can just run my program without problems. If you're using Flow, you also have the possibility to add type information using plain comments at these respective places. For example, here, param1 is of type string, param2 of type string, and the return value is also of type string. Also here, since these are normal comments, the JavaScript engine will not take those into account and you can run your program without an extra compilation step. Now the proposal is to allow type annotations in plain JavaScript. The syntax is the same as in TypeScript. You add a colon and then the type. In this case, the variable x is of type string. It's important to note that this type annotation is just an annotation and will not change the execution of the program in any way. It's as if you would have written a plain comment. As in TypeScript, you can also add type annotations for parameters or functions, and you can also specify the return type. You won't always have primitive types, therefore it's also possible to create object types using the interface keyword. In this case, an interface person is created with the fields name and age of type string and number. You can also create type aliases. If you write JavaScript classes, you can also add property declarations here the name as a string. In addition to that, you can also have type arguments, in this case a set of type string. You can define object types similar to interfaces, name is a string and age is a number. There's also a shorthand for array types. 
and uh, you can have callable and constructible type shorthands. So for example, here x of type string returns a string. You can have tuple types, number, number. You can have union types, that means it's either a string or a number. You can have intersection types, in this case it's named and a dog. You can have the this type and indexed access types. To declare that a type is optional, you can add the question mark. Since your project typically consists of many files, you can also export types and also interfaces and later on also import types. It's important to note that import type will not resolve the file and the loading of the file during runtime. It will be completely ignored. You can also mix and match imports. For example, here I import parse source file from parser as well as the type source file. Only the type will be ignored during runtime. Note that using the syntax, in this case import type source file from parser, it will be resolved and loaded at runtime even though you only import a type. Generic type are also possible. For example, here you define a type foo with a generic parameter t, which is just a list of t. Or here you define an interface bar of t for every t. It's an object with a property x of type t. It's also possible to explicitly specify the tag arguments but the syntax which is used in TypeScript is not possible. One possible solution to this problem is to add some kind of syntactic prefix. For example, here we use uh, colon colon, so add colon colon and then you can specify the generic type parameter. This is also used in the programming language Rust where this syntax is called turbofish. And the reason for that is that this looks like a fish and this looks like a fish swimming really fast. In your functions you can also specify the type of this. In this case you can just use this as a first parameter which is by the way invalid in plain JavaScript so you will not have clashes with existing code and here you can just define the type. The proposal has a very narrow scope and many things are explicitly excluded especially all TypeScript relevant things which generate code. This is the case for enums, namespaces, and parameter properties. But these constructs can also be added in separate TC39 proposals. The proposal also has answers to relevant questions. For example, why not define a type system for JS instead? The answer is that the model of TypeScript style systems is non-local and are best effort checks. They are expensive to perform at application startup and only need to be performed once you've written the app, not every time it's loaded. It also means that improvements in the type system could break already shipped programs, and that's a no-go for the web. It's also a multi-year effort which would probably never reach consensus. Another very interesting question is if this proposal could enable the runtimes to optimize the performance based on those type hints. Now, in theory, this is possible, but the problem is that there have not been any successful experiments in JavaScript um, that could use static types to beat the dynamic type-driven JIT optimization. Also keep in mind that types are completely opaque to the runtime. Take, for example, import type. It will not load and parse the file. The runtime will just ignore it. If types would be used for runtime performance, then also those files would need to be loaded and parsed. All in all, I find this a very interesting and pragmatic approach to introduce types into JavaScript. I just wish that type checking would be formalized, though I know that it's a fast moving field which would certainly be slowed down by a committee. It's just that I'm afraid that there might be some incompatibilities amongst different type systems and that type checking your code base might lead to errors because of that. Also keep in mind that there's no guarantee that types introduced by package authors are correct. There's no machine checking that. So type checking errors are not as trustworthy as in other languages. Nevertheless, I'm glad that the need for static types is considered and I thank the authors for this nice proposal. As a final remark, I also like how Haskell is defining type signatures. First, you write the function without any type information. So in this case, the function add three which takes an x, a y, and a c, and just adds them together. And after that, you define another line. 
here with the same name as the function colon colon and then you provide all the types of those parameters and also the returning parameter. Since everything is curried by default, you write these little arrows, basically meaning it's a function which takes an int and returns a function which takes an int, which returns a function which takes an int to return an int. If I would transfer this to the JavaScript world, I would probably do something like this, maybe three slashes to indicate type information. And then I would just take the signature of the function and replace all the parameter names with their types. So in this case, it would be string, string, plus the return type, string. For variables, I could also do something similar. I could just write here number. So this would also work for objects. Let's say I have a function foo, which takes an object with property a and b. And let's just say these shall be numbers and I return a plus b, then I would annotate it with signature, object, number, number, number. So the advantage is that this would work out of the box without any changes from the engines because these are just plain comments. The disadvantage is that existing code might already have those comments, then they would be misinterpreted as type hints, so that's probably not good. Another disadvantage is that the type hints might go out of sync. For example, when you switch parameter positions here, you really need to be careful. On the other hand, I like Haskell's feature to just see the types of a function without being bothered of reading the names of the arguments. I find that often enough information and it's really concise. Please let me know what you think in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.